What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be reacting to Predecimal Currency, the nightmare in your pocket. This video was recommended to me by a subscriber and before this video was recommended to me, I had never even heard of Predecimal Currency before. But it turns out that what we actually have today is Decimal Currency. And Decimal Currency is a currency with a subunit that's based on a factor of 10. And that makes a lot of sense. I obviously understand what a decimal is. I've just never been taught currency like that, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, I just didn't know that it was actually called decimal currency. Um, but this should be really interesting because understanding what decimal currency is now tells me that pre-decimal currency is the exact opposite of that. And I can understand why the subtitle of this title is The Nightmare in Your Pocket, because I can understand that it was probably, you know, since everything is kind of, you know, we have, for example, an American currency, you know, 100 penny makes a dollar, uh, 20 nickels makes a dollar, 10 dimes makes a dollar, four quarters makes a dollar. I mean, it's all so easy. I, kind of like probably how you guys look at the metric system uh, being easier than the uh, imperial system that America still uses. And I can kind of understand this is a little taste of that probably. Um, I can understand that looking back on predecimal currency is kind of how a lot of people from the metric side of things looks at the imperial system. Um, that's you know, in a nutshell is what I'm gathering um, without actually having fully understood what predecimal currency is yet, because that's what we're going to do in this video. But uh, for example, I'm guessing that uh, a lot of the numbers that were used in the currency when they were predecimal was very odd. And so, uh, yeah, guys, enough rambling for me. Um, you know, I think I understand where this is going, but I don't fully understand it because I haven't really, you know, studied this or looked into it. So I'm kind of excited to dive in and learn about this. So let's just go ahead and get into it and learn about predecimal currency, the nightmare in your pocket. If you watch any film set or made in the UK before 1971, you might catch some very strange phrases relating to money. Ah, oh, you clever boy. Here's a shilling for you. There'll be some change then. Oh, crikey, I forgot. Oh, you're 20, 11 for three farthings. Well, if I give you a farthing, you can give me three bob, right? Oh, yeah. Ten shillings, sir. Sorry I got nothing small, then. Thank you. You've been such a help. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out your money. Uh, is that all right? That's because for centuries, the UK and Ireland used a different Both. system of money to the rest of the world. Whereas today you have the pound sterling, made up of 100 pence each, before there was a pound sterling, made up of 20 shillings, and each shilling was worth 12 pence. In okay, yeah, that I can understand right off the bat how that could be very confusing if you're trying to you know, do the math in your head very quickly. Um, but one thing I wanted to bring up was 1971, that's when this changed? Because um, if that's the case, I'm not... A if I'm not mistaken, that's actually when the U.S. also came off the gold standard, which is it's probably just a coincidence if that's the case. Um, but if I'm accurate on that, I think I am. I'd have to go back and look. But if I am, that's just that's a very interesting coincidence. I don't know. Nothing, you know anyway, let's continue. In ancient times, a pound sterling comes from a pound of sterling or silver mm, and okay. a shilling meaning the shaving off of bits of metal to make it easier to carry. So mm. for hundreds of years, people living in Britain or its territories had to work with this convoluted system of base 12 and then base 20 and then base 10 way of handling money. The coins of this system were the farthing, the half penny, the penny, the threepence, the oh my goodness, the shilling, the florin, the half crown, the crown, the half sovereign, the pound. The groat, the angel, the Armani, <laughs> the fine sovereign, the guinea, the dinique, oh my the three farthing, the half groat. I made a couple of those up, see if you can guess which one. Oh, okay. It's even worse <laughs> if you lived in medieval Scotland who had even more coins like the pistol, the dollar, the rile, the lion, the ducat, the merc, the unicorn, the bauby, the bodle and the plaque. Those are all real names for coins in Scotland before the Union. Wales was the only sensible one of the three by just having one coin, the penny. 
Thankfully, by the Victorian really? era, most of these coins had gone out of fashion, and most. So, did uh, the penny? Is that the same as basically, kind of like the U.S. penny in regards to its a, I guess a one, and a hundred of them would have equaled up to their version of the dollar. I, I don't know. That doesn't. No, I don't think that's the case, but. I'm sure that was much easier to deal with anyway. <laughs> Most people before then were so poor that they never actually saw half of those coins. But wow. imagine being an accountant in the 17th century though. Have fun with that job. No, by the 1900s only a handful of these coins were left. The half penny, which was half a penny, and sometimes called the halfpenny for short, making this word the longest one syllable word in the world. It's pronounced hapths. The oh. penny self-explanatory, threepence or thruppence, which is three pence, sixpence, which was unsurprisingly six pence. Wait, 12 of these in ones? Okay, so yeah, that's not the same because we, all right, wow, <laughs> wow. The shilling, which was 12 pence, okay. this was also known as the bob. The florin, which was two shillings or 24 pence. The half crown, two shillings and sixpence, the crown, which was five shillings or a quarter of a pound, and the pound, 20 shillings or 240 pence. What? I mean, obviously people from, you know, if you were born into the system and you were there for a period of time before it changed, obviously this become much easier to you than it looks just looking at this for the first time, but... Two of these in one D. What does that mean? Two farthings, two of these in one D. Because I thought maybe this was talking about maybe in a pound, but this is 20 of these in a pound. So that's obviously not the case. And this a half penny wouldn't make sense for it to be. Um, and then I thought the same thing for here. Like, what is the one, a one shilling? Okay, one D. I don't know what that is, but this is probably 12 of these in one shilling, I'm thinking. Four of these in one shilling. Two of these in one shilling. 20 of these in a pound. 10 of these in a pound. Eight of these in a pound. Four. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Man. And although there wasn't a coin for it, there was also a guinea, which was just a more friendly way of saying one pound and one shilling. This was so shops could make it seem like the item only costed a pound when they were actually scamming you out of an extra 12 pence. It was an extra tax. Also, every single one wow. of these coins had a ton of slang and nicknames, so an American or European moving to the UK or Ireland would not only have to learn this ridiculous counting method, but also all of the slang that goes with them. Wow. Let's say you're in the queue for the shop and you have two items. One costs three pounds, 16 shillings and 11 pence. The other costs five pounds, 15 shillings, and 10 pence. Now, in the minute or two you'll be waiting in line, you'll need to work out in your head, what is the total cost of both of my items, and what is the minimum number of coins I can use to pay for it? You can pause the video to think about it in your own time, but here's how you'd work it out. 11 plus 10 is 21, and because there are 12 pennies in a shilling, that makes one shilling and nine pence. So you carry the one shilling, adding up the shillings to make 32. There are 20 shillings in a pound, so that's one pound and 12 shillings. Carry that to the pounds column and you get four plus five is nine, making in total nine pounds, 12 shillings and nine pence. Now you've worked that out, you need to find it in your coins to make that amount. What is the minimum number of coins and notes you need to pay for this in exact change? Wait, what? What was this called again? The D, what, what, anyway, we'll probably find out. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What is the one D? He said it and I missed it. I, I didn't miss it. I just forgot to remember it. This one's easy, pound, shilling. The answer is a five pound note, four pound notes or coins, two crowns, which is 10 shillings total, a half crown, which is two shillings, sixpence, and a threepence, making oh, nine. Oh, it's a pence. pence. 
9, 12, and 9. Oh. If you found that too easy, here's the same puzzle, but pretend these are the only coins that you have in your pocket. He's not have joking. This is Perhaps this would be like a puzzle. if you grew up with this system, you'd be a bit faster at this. Sure. But it's still an awful lot of mental work that everyone had to go through virtually every single day. Man. If you have a British grandparent, go ahead and ask them what it was like. Obviously, this system is ridiculous. It's overly complicated, an unhelpful way of pricing things, and with the advent of computers, it was going to make the digitization of money a lot more difficult. It was time to change. Yeah, I guess that's true. Ideas for decimalizing the pound go back as far as 1824, and various attempts at it had been done since then. By the 1860s, most of the world's countries and colonies had switched to decimal currency. But as with all things, we had to do it differently to those smelly Europeans because we're British and we're a special island. So Britain and most of her colonies continued using a currency system from the medieval times until 1971. Wow. That's, that's crazy. In the I 1960s, never knew this. a parliamentary commission on how to improve and streamline the UK financial system returned with the suggestion of switching to base 10 currency. Ireland did the same because after Irish independence in 1922, they had decided to peg the Irish pound to the British pound mm. for reasons we will discuss another time. Some considered changing the name of the currency entirely to the Britannia or the Royal or the, the Noble, but it didn't mm. catch on. The initial That's plan was for there to be 100 pennies in a pound and keeping the shilling so that there would be now 5 shillings in a pound. Then they realized they could just turn the shilling into a 20 pence coin and delete the shilling from their plans to make it even easier. The new pound would stay equal to one pound. A crown would be equal to 25 pence. A florin would now be worth 10 pence. The shilling would be worth five pence. Three and sixpence would be withdrawn. They'd be replaced by one and two P coins. And with that, the date was set. On the 15th of February, wow, 1971, the UK and Ireland would switch to decimal money, like the rest of the world. Some people resisted. They thought the new system was too complicated <laughs> and nobody would understand base 10 currency. And I suppose that's true if you struggle to count to 10. <laughs> Side note, a similar thing is actually happening more recently as the UK has begun to adopt the metric system for driving. Mm. Some road signs are now printed in kilometers instead of miles, and some boomers have taken it upon themselves to tape over these new signs because they think the metric system is too difficult to learn. Some things never change. In the months leading up to Decimal Day, both old and new currencies were circulated in parallel, meaning you could solve that problem from earlier using even more types of coins. That must have oh, been wow. a fun year for retail workers. Some of the more silly coins were withdrawn from circulation to make things easier, like the half crown and the old half penny. Shops began to display their prices in the new system. Booklets were sent to every household with information on how to convert to the new money, and there was even a radio jingle to help people remember. Decimalization, soon it's gonna be time to change the money round cost we've got. Decimalization, decimalization, there's a hundred new pennies now for This was until Decimalization Day, or D-Day, when the old money was no longer wow. accepted in shops. You'd expect there to be chaos or old people causing a fuss, but no, it went by without a problem. The only big change since then is that the half penny has been withdrawn from circulation in 1984, because inflation was too high for it to be of any use. Yeah, like what? Curiously, this, this shilling point, has apparently the beaten inflation, and would have more buying power now than the five pence coin does today. So maybe we need to get rid of some more coins and bring back the shilling? Anyway, that's the end of the story. Aside from Nigeria in 1973, the UK and Ireland were the last countries to make the switch. Wow. Most of the UK's former empire had made the switch decades or even centuries ago. Madagascar and Mauritania are the only countries who don't use the base 10 currency. Their currency works in base five. But inflation is so high that the base 5 coins are never used. Also, some really old UK banks still use computers from the 60s that work out everything in pounds, shilling and pence. So it's nice to know your entire life savings are in safe hands. 
but if you're ever watching an old British film, or you've ever been transported back to London in 1872, <laughs> at least now you'll know what the shopkeepers are talking about when they list off all those strange numbers. Wow. Guys, this was really interesting. I had no idea this was ever a thing. I mean, it's kind of crazy that this was a thing. I mean, I mean, it obviously made a lot of sense to the people at one point, um, but I just can't imagine going into a system like that from not being from going from a decimal currency to a pre-decimal currency. Like if I was to go from the U.S. back in the '60s to the to the to Britain, and oh my goodness, it would wow, that would have been hard to you know hard to understand how to do that math very quickly, you know, coming from a different system. But I can imagine this is a little bit like it is coming from a metric system coming to the U.S. and dealing with the imperial system. You know, I, I can kind of see, you know, what some people are talking about now because I can understand the complication that comes with that change. Um this was yeah. This was that's crazy. I just never knew that existed, and it's it's still so weird to me that the same year that I think we came off the gold standard, this changed. I don't obviously I don't think that had anything to do with with each other, but it's just weird how that just happened like that. Hmm. Um, but this reminds me. I, I've I've been meaning to actually learn about you know British currency, um, you know modern currency mainly, but. I'm also not against going back and looking at some other older currency stuff. Um, I just find that kind of interesting. You know, I still don't really understand the way the British currency system is set up. And I and I don't understand, like, obviously, I know Northern Ireland would use the, um, you know, use the British currency system, right? Because, you know, they're part of the UK. Um, but the Republic of Ireland, I'm not really sure... I think they actually use the euro, don't they? I I, I believe they do. Um, so that would be two different systems, and I know that would be a nightmare. Wouldn't it be a nightmare in on the actual island of Ireland between Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland if people are getting paid in the euro? In that's a different video, obviously, right? But it's just something that popped in my head. If you're in Northern Ireland and you get paid in, say, the British pound, I think you probably do. I'm not 100 percent sure of that, but I think you probably do. And then you go, you know, right across the border. You know, I, I, there's no border there really much except for the old peace walls or whatever. But you can pretty much just drive through and you go shopping in a place in the Republic of Ireland that gets paid in the euro, right? Man, that seems like that could be a little bit of a nightmare there if I'm thinking of that correctly. Maybe I'm not. Maybe, I, you know, I don't really have a clue exactly how that's working with the currencies there. Um, but that's something I got to look into as well. But guys, like I said, this was really interesting. I had never heard about this. Uh, I think that most people would probably agree that it's good that this system is gone. Based off the surface, based off the little bit I know here, it seems like it was way overcomplicated um, compared to what you what you probably have now. <laughs> because coming from a place with a decimal currency, I can imagine that... Um, you know, you guys in the UK are happy you have a decimal currency as well versus this pre-decimal currency that I'm looking at and like, yeah, this would take me a little bit of time to learn all those coins and stuff and 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 figure out exactly, remember how much each of those coins were compared to other coins and like, man, that's, whew, okay. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. I'd love to, you know, be recommended some other topics alongside this topic, some other videos that have something to do with things like this, currency, anything that has to do with, um, you know, things like this, if you will. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Until next time, guys, peace.